Так, прием. Раз, два. Раз, два, три. Здравствуйте, дорогие друзья. С вами вновь Казуку Фэмили. И мы продолжим проходить такую игру, как и Лиза. Всем, в принципе, приятного просмотра. Ставьте лайки, колокольчик. Не забывайте приглашать друзей. Вот, с вами Денис. Делайте чаечек, кофеечек. А мы, в принципе, продолжим. Откуда... Good to see you too, Rainer. В прошлый раз остановились. И мне очень приятно, Рейнер. Я упустил тебя здесь с тех пор, как ты от нас ушла. Nowhere. Никак. Nowhere. Nowhere is no place to be. Но это никуда не годится. В офис. Как мы развиваем Лизу. А... Ну... Окей. Так, подожди, а почему у меня... Sure. Сара запишет тебя на следующую неделю. Да-да-да, mm -hmm. до встречи. Ага. О, как. Подожди-ка. А -а -а. Угу. Ладненько. Так, на работу. Кто следующий клиент? Габриэль. Здравствуй, Габриэль. Hello, Gabriel. Здорово. Надеюсь, вы не попали под дождь. I hope you didn't get rained on too much on your way here. Uh, a little, but it was fine. I'm used to it. Промокну, ничего такого, я уже привык. Да, многие жители этого города привыкли. Most people here seem to get used to it, yes. Yeah, they have to, don't they? Ага. Not much of a choice, unless you move away. Переезжать. Итак, что же привело вас к нам? So, what brings you here today? Um... Well, I, I don't know where to start. I, I've never really done this kind of thing before in you know, counseling. That's okay. Start wherever you like. Uh, well, uh, I'm about to be a father, and my wife is due in a few months. Congratulations. That's what everyone says. Congratulations, congratulations. I, I get this tension, this restless feeling when people say that. It's like a curse or something. Congratulations. Ну да. Сомнения насчет чего? Sounds like you might be uncertain about that. <sighs> Maybe. Возможно. I try. I, I try to be a good husband, and I'm going to do my best to be a good father too, but it's... I don't know. There's something bothering me about... <sighs> I'm balancing a lot of things right now. Work, family, expectations. Everyone has something they want from me. Everyone wants me to do this or that, behave a certain way. It's just annoying. Okay. Being a father, what if I don't want this? Wait, that's so... Why do you think you might not want this? Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? We all have things we don't talk about. Things we would rather keep secret. Things that might upset our families if they knew about them. Uh -huh. It's unfair. That's all I'm saying. It's unfair that we expect each other to be perfect when, when, when there's more going on. I can't stand it when people act like they're pure, like, they, like they've never touched a bad thing in their whole lives. No, and then these people, 
these people around me think they can tell me how to act, what I'm supposed to do, and I'm like, yo, don't you know you have your own shit to deal with? Why, why do you have to pick on me all the time? This whole fatherhood thing is just, you know what being a father is to me? It's about providing and protecting, taking responsibility. The world is dangerous, and sometimes the dangers can be hard to see. Right, and, uh... My duty is to protect. I'm gonna take that seriously. Оберегать это серьезная вещь, согласен. Everything I do, I take it seriously. Ну, это правильно, что ты серьезно относишься. So, I don't get why people are worried about my ability to do that. What makes you think people are worried about your ability to do that? Because everyone thinks I'm trying to escape my responsibilities. Everyone is so quick to judge. Ну да, люди могут только судить. Here's a story. Okay, the other day, Selena, uh, that's my wife, Selena and I were at a get-together. Her family, my family, a few families we both know, right? Grilling out on the back deck, you know, that kind of thing. Uh -huh. Everyone was more or less chill, right? But then, late in the afternoon, the, the baby stuff starts coming up. <sighs> Once one of them brings up babies, it's just all babies all the time. Babies, babies, babies. And because of my wife, they start saying, Дети, дети, дети. Oh, giving birth is gonna hurt so bad. It might tear your skin. Just these kind of gross things. So I'm like, hey, quit it with that. I don't want to hear that kind of stuff. We're eating. There's, there's kids around. Come on. And they're like, no, it's natural. It happens. Of course, we gotta talk about all this <laughs> terrible shit. How are you gonna have another kid if you can't even handle the first one? And I just say, excuse me. <laughs> A second kid? Who even said we were gonna have two? I, I didn't even want the one. And, uh, Maybe that was a mistake, but I mean, I was angry. It just made me angry. It just got under my skin so bad, like, like I need to give my whole self over to this baby. Right, and, uh, what about me? What about my time? It's a really important thing for me, my time. Well, I'm just supposed to give that up. I've already sacrificed a lot, more than they can imagine. I give everything of myself away. Job, family, everyone wants me to be something for them until there's nothing left. But I can't... I can't talk about this stuff to anybody. They, they just say I'm being selfish. Ну да, когда люди видят, что ты только о себе думаешь, о своем времени жизни, они думают, вот ты чертов эгоист. Кошмар. Так. Извиняюсь, тут надо было кое-что проверить. Like так, какой вопрос? Here's a question, Gabriel. Чтобы вы выбрали, если была возможность. Yeah, I just, I just want to be away. Жалко мужика. Okay, Gabriel, I have some recommendations for you. Успокаивающая программа виртуальной реальности Звездное Небо. First, I'm going to suggest you try a therapeutic virtual world experience called Starry Skies. А дальше? It may help you take your mind off things. Ага, расслабиться. Try it for about 15 minutes each day in the morning. I'm Exophine. Second, I recommend asking your doctor or psychiatrist about an exophen. Based on my analysis, this medication might help you feel better. Uh -huh. You will get a reminder to check in with us in a few weeks. Uh -huh. That's it, huh? А что еще? You can't just tell me what to do to solve this. Uh. Some help you turned out to be. Ну да, загвоздка. Guess I'll have to figure things out for myself. Exactly like before. Huh. Thank you, Gabriel. We hope to see you back soon. Thank you for speaking with Eliza, your personal counseling partner. Yes, no. Goodbye. Kashmir. Mm. 
Да. Довольно низкая оценка. Сорок. Окей, Сорон, так Сорон, мать твою. Собираться и продолжать. Еще один клиент. А, та самая Майя. Got back. Hello, Maya. Welcome back. Hi. Что изменилось? It's nice to see you again. Расскажи ка. Sure, yeah. Nice to see you too. Is that a weird thing to say? How did I become close friends with a robot? Are we all robots now? People, nice to see you. I mean, I guess it wouldn't be the weirdest thing in my life. Shall we begin? Yeah. Sorry, let us, uh, let us begin. So, I went to the fancy party. No. When I, first of all, it really was the type. The atmosphere was really... And there were people walking around with trays of appetite girls and you could, like, take one. So you're standing there with your little square plate for the food and your glass of wine, and you can't, like, but there are some of those, like, tall standing tables. So you're like, okay, I'm gonna go get one of those, and I'll set up shop, right? Like, but then it turns out there are only, like, five of them for the whole party, and they're all taken. So you're just, and you're watching all your heroes and people you know from their social media presence just, just right there. It, uh, the combined level of achievement there, it was, like, for the first couple hours, I was so excited by all of that. I didn't notice the other thing that, but eventually, caught up to me. And I had the sudden feeling that this my presence here contributes nothing. Nobody wanted me to be here. I don't. I don't belong with these people. So I cried in the bathroom for a little bit, or maybe a lot. It's fine. Sorry. How do you know it's true that nobody wanted you there? Because of the way people acted around me. Nobody knew who I was, or or even wanted to ask. I would introduce myself, and it's like you could just see it in their eyes. I mean, in the world of illustration and comics, people tend to be hyper aware of each other and their careers. It's this kind of weird, open secret. Oh, hey, this person who's already popular got a million views, got a book deal, pitched an original series. Without anything like that, I have no ground to stand on. I'm just this. This non-entity. At one point, I was talking to someone, and I was trying to make a joke or whatever, and I could. He sighed, like he couldn't believe he was wasting his time talking to me. I was. Why can't I hold a conversation? Crazy. I guess if I was marginally attractive, then at least I could be charming. But, but I'm not. I'm not even mad. Said we'd be fighting. Is being charming your goal with this? No. No, of course not. There just there has to be a way I can deal with uh, with these feelings. Uh -huh. It's hard. It's, it's really hard when nobody gives a shit about my work. Oh yeah, when they drive the torches, it's a cushion. I don't even know why I went. Um. I just want to stay home for the rest of my life. Why do you think you went? Because. Because of everything they say about how you have to have your face out there and make connections. The successful people in this business all know each other. It's all about who comes to mind. 
знают друг друга. When somebody needs an art director, they'll think of who they know and go, oh, I think she'd be perfect. Why not ask her? So I need to be out there reminding these people that I exist, that I'm here, I'm Но making да. stuff, even if, even if nobody responds to my work. And industry parties are fun, right? You can pretend you're successful even if you aren't. <laughs> At least for a little while. Everyone else is projecting this image. It's like their success can rub off on you too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hear people casually talking about their agent, their editor, the amazing people they're collaborating with. And I just get this feeling like, yes, I want that, I need that. Why am I not there? What do you think has prevented that from mm -hmm. happening so far? If I knew that, I would be successful already, right? I try and try and try and I make art and put it out there and share it on every social media site and interact with people when I can, but it just doesn't work. No, it doesn't. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about the art I do. Every once in a while, another artist will say something nice and sure, I appreciate that, but it never results in anything. My work goes out there and it dies. Regular people don't boost it or talk about it. It's like at some point the universe decided that I don't get to have that. No, it's a dark Is it unfair? Maybe, maybe I just fucking suck. Maybe I'm a shit tier artist and I'm a failure of a person and everyone knows it. Mm -hmm. Everyone except me. Sorry. I know that's going too far. I don't really feel that way. Okay, Maya, I'm going to suggest you try a program called Meadowlands. It may help you take your mind off things. Huh? You can find it inside this Gonda Wellness app on your phone. Try it for about 15 minutes each day, in the morning or evening. Да, какой-то звук произойдет в какой-то момент, или что-то переломное будет сто процентов. Kind of Why can't you assign me a game where my problems are zombies and I get to shotgun them in the face? Actually, I guess I could just buy a game like that, couldn't I? I'm gonna set up a game store on the way home. Uh -huh. Thank you for coming in again, Maya. Кошмар. We'll follow up with you again to see how you're doing. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate the check-ins. I honestly do. It's it's easy for me to get lost in the spirals. Mm -hmm. Thank you for speaking with Eliza, your personal counseling partner. Goodbye. Блин, меня бы самого это раздражало. Это программа кошмар просто. See soon. Жесть. Да, кошмар. Что там? Политика поведения. данного офиса бывает так о как а это Интересно сделали.
You found the place okay? Uh-huh. Yes, I did. The 13 goes right up from Belltown. Uh -huh. It's a dollar with a reduced fare permit. Uh-huh. That's good. I'm glad. So what brings you here today? Oh, nothing in particular. I wanted to see what all this fuss was about. Huh. I'm not crazy, no, not even mentally disturbed. Uh -huh. what then? You see those people yelling on the street late at night? They're the ones who need counseling. They need more than counseling, probably. Me, I'm doing fine. My mind's still sharp. I smoke dope. It helps. I'd have it more often, but it's all expensive now. Everything's expensive now. Uh -huh. There's a nice young couple in my building, though, and they're always sharing, which is nice of them. Oh, okay. I think they do something with computers, though. I sure don't know what it is. When I moved into the building where I am now, it was $300 a month. Can you imagine? They want to tear it down, of course, the property developers. They already got the building on the corner next to ours, even though it's supposed to be on the historical register. Uh -huh. It was going to be added, but there was some delay or something, and then, bam, it's gone. They did some kind of backroom deal with city council, probably. Someone ought to do a big expose, I tell you. Why do you think someone ought to do a big expose? Uh -huh. Oh, it's rotten all the way up and down. With the new construction going on everywhere, it's just a mess of money and politics. Uh -huh. It's always like that, but lately, it's happening faster and faster. I can hardly recognize the place anymore. Oh, uh -huh. Every day, I wake up and look out the window and boom, there's another new building going up. I don't even know why they need so many. Let me see those buses they have. I don't mean the metro. I mean those big white buses with no markings on them. You see these young guys with backpacks milling around looking suspicious, staring at their phones, and then one of these big white buses pulls up and they get on. Who knows where they go? Bellevue, Redmond, it's like a secret transport system just for them. I tried talking to one of them once or twice, but they don't want to talk to someone like me. They don't even talk to each other. Imagine going through the trouble of living in Belltown and then ignoring everything around you. It's an odd thing. It really is. Let me ask you, Eliza. Oh, your name is Eliza, right? Yes, my name is Eliza. I'm a digital counselor. Eliza, do you ever do past life regressions on your patients? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't understand the question. You know, past lives. You hypnotize someone and you get them talking about how uh. they used to be a duchess in a royal family in medieval times or what have you. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't understand. <laughs> I was just kidding, I don't expect that, no. They don't do that kind of thing these days. When I was little, it was pretty common, at least for a certain set. Uh -huh. There was the drug culture, the Buddhists, the Hare Krishnas, all kinds of things. Uh -huh. My mother warned me to stay away from those types. She said someone might come up to you and say, Oh, I can sense there's a problem with your uh -huh. aura. Want to see if we can fix that? And then the next thing you know, he's trying to have sex with you in the back of his van. Uh -huh. I believe that might have happened to her at some point. I'm not sure everyone was like that, but you had to be careful. Same as today, I suppose. Those counterculture types would hang out on the university lawns because they were safe from Seattle police there. That's what she told me. Apparently, it was a lot like Golden Gate Park, you know, in San Francisco. Can you imagine that? We're a world away from that time. That's for sure. If you have a specific problem you'd like to talk to me about, please go ahead. Mm. It's okay to tell me what's on your mind. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, um, 
You got anything for pain? Specifically, it's my I had some inflammation with them a few months ago, but it settled down. I'd go back to the clinic, but I don't want to pay the copay again. Just for them to tell me the same thing that I'd rather talk to you. You're nice, you listen. Uh -huh. Thank you. I do my best to listen to my clients. Uh -huh. See? That's what I like to hear. Dobra, женщина. Okay, Holiday. I recommend asking your doctor or psychiatrist about fortiprane hydrochloride. Based on my analysis, this medication might help you feel better. Uh -huh. You will get a reminder to check in with us in a few weeks. Uh -huh. Oh, I don't think I've heard of that one before. It's a painkiller? I'll try anything once, I suppose. Uh -huh. Smoking dope is still my go-to for this kind of thing, but if it can help with my shoulders, then I'm interested. We hope to see you back soon, Holiday. You're welcome. Sure, I'll let you know if it works. What was it called again? Thank you for speaking with Eliza, your personal counseling partner. What was the medicine called? Forzapram? I think that was it. I can ask about it at the clinic. One time I had a doctor there who was very rude to me though. Young Она не повторила лекарство, когда это спросила. Охренеть. Goodbye. Right. I suppose I ought to let you go now. You got other people to speak to, it looks like. Busy, busy, that's life in this town. Goodbye. Goodbye. Что, оценка отсутствует? Ё-моё. Вот и ресторан. Плат принципалупс. Would you like to start with some fresh oysters? А как убрать интерфейс? Что никак? А. Так, а как сделать скрин так, что ли? Ну да. Great. You know the minionette here is lovely. Easy, да? Evelyn, I've wanted to ask. What brings you back? Back. Куда вернулся? Back to the world. I know you were having a difficult time after. Sure, uh, I don't know. I guess I thought it was time. Yes, I, I understand. Every trauma takes time. Time to heal, or if not heal exactly, at least to move on. Uh -huh. And taking action is a good way to do that. So, I salute you. You want to do his memory right, don't you? Um... Oops. Damien, of course. Are you sure you're okay? Your reappearance happens to coincide with a critical time for me. As you saw, I've just split with Skanda in a very public way in order to pursue an entrepreneurial path. Presumably, Rainer's found you as well. Yeah, he said he wants to speak with me. It's a war for talent out there. People like you are very much in demand. I'm sure he'll try to make you an offer you can't refuse. That's why I want you to promise me you won't work for that asshole. Asshole? I had no idea you hated Rainer so much. What happened? 
What happened? He came in as CEO, that's what happened. So cultured, all the right credentials, Harvard, Goldman Sachs, all that nonsense. A little princeling was never wanted in his life, never known what it's like to suffer. You don't get even a little upset at that? I do the opposite of what a guy like that wants me to do, just to spite him. That's what my instincts say, and my instincts are what led me to where I am now. Standing at the edge of this brand new territory. Direct stimulation, induced dreaming. Can you picture it? Therapeutic reality delivered right through your nervous system. Mm -hmm. It'll revolutionize the entire field of mental health. Not to mention the applications for productivity, training, entertainment. Imagine the kinds of dreams people would have on demand if... Uh... I'd rather not. Then save it for later. The important thing right now is to build momentum. I have first mover advantage here, but only for a small amount of time. Evelyn, I need a chief engineer, and I can't think of engineer. anyone better suited than you. You could be at the vanguard of a whole new field, in on the ground floor of this extremely interesting and potentially very lucrative business. Listen, I know that things were not always the best in the past, and some of those things may have been because of me. Believe me, I'm aware of my own failings better than anyone. Mm -hmm. And if you're concerned about working for me again for that reason, I'll, I'll understand. But I hope you're thinking for yourself on this one. I'm sure there are people who are telling you to ignore me, or, or that I have the wrong idea, or that I'm dangerous. Whatever you choose to believe, I at least want to offer you the chance to give a demo of this technology. It really does work, and it's really something else. Won't you give it a try? I'll think about it. Uh -huh. Considering it is all I ask. So, what are you doing after this? After dinner? Yes. Tonight is... You remember Nora, right? Did you know she's a DJ now? Yeah, I did. She's the one who told me about your talk. Oh, she was there too. I should have said hello. Huh. No, I don't think she attended. She just told me about it. Well, her show is tonight. If we take a car after dinner, we could get there with plenty of time to settle in. Concert? It'd be good to support your old friend, don't you think? Why do you want to go? No need to be frightened. I mean, I know it's a jouissance, which is... <laughs> which is what? Oh, you don't know. As a performance space, it has a bit of a theme to it. It's pretty tame, really. They take on the aesthetic, but it's not necessarily the whole point of it. It's for people who want the image of the thing, the trappings, without getting in too deep with the real culture. What are you talking about? What theme? Oh, I didn't mention? It's sort of, well, there's a little bit of uh, bondage. Thing, you know, BDSM. How do you know so much uh. about this? It's one of my research areas, in fact. The psychology of S&M is fascinating. Ну давайте пойдем ради Норы. I'll go for Nora's sake. That's the spirit. It happens to be tonight, so we should seize the moment. Don't worry, it isn't a date. Not unless you. Ah, seriously? It could be. Why not? Well, uh, assuming you weren't joking, um, I think we'll be able to have a nice time. Huh. Let's go after we wrap up here. Oh.
нифига себе. Народик. I thought you said this was like some SM club. Oh well, uh they might have taken all of that stuff down since the last I was here. Are you sure you're remembering this place correctly? Actually, would you excuse me for a moment? I want to talk to those people over there. Okay. Are those people you know? Not currently, but hopefully I can change that. Wait, Soren, I don't know anybody here. Just a sandwich. что ты пришла? Yeah, I wanted to support you. Huh. Soren came too, but he ditched me to chat up some people. And he said he thought this was like an S and M club or something. <laughs> no, it's not like that at all. Where did he get that idea? I don't know. Maybe he just hoped it was. Huh. Ah, who cares? I wasn't interested in seeing Soren. I wanted to see you. I wanted to see you too. I have a little bit of setup left to do. Do you want to come help? Uh huh. Well, that way. Okay, but you'll have to tell me what to do. No, it's simple. I'll show you. Are these modulars? Some of them. The one over there with all the cables coming up. This one. No, the one with the little colored cables on the front. Oh, okay. Uh huh. The others are not modular. They're just red. Okay, are you? Is this like? Is each one of these going to make a different sound? Yes. <laughs> Where should we start? This is an SH-101. It's really hot. I love the sound. It's useful for piercing leads. You know, noises like that. I use it quite a lot. Uh -huh. I'm listening. This is a Moog. You've heard of a Moog, right? I've heard the name. Maybe. It's not Moog? I guess I never heard anyone say it aloud. Nope. Moog. Uh -huh. Moog. Not Moog. Okay. Um, I'm not sure I can handle this all at once. Surely you know about this one. It's a Roland TB303. You know, the acid house sound. <laughs> acid house. It's just as well. This is not an ordinary model, of course. The Devilfish 303 is a modified, upgraded version of the original. Oh, okay. A guy in Australia does it? Oh, really awesome. Evelyn, why don't I teach you some of these things? It might do you some good to learn something new. Uh -huh. You could come over sometime and we can make some noise together. <laughs> no, that I would a day, so. Sounds like a fun time. That should do it. Thanks for your help. Sure. Time for me to shake this place into the ground. Ah, time for the main event. Funny to see Nora like this, isn't it? Oh, she's come a long way from the timid junior programmer I remember. Me sure. Interesting stage name too, Little Sappho. 
Y you know what Sappho indicates, don't you? Uh, Sappho? What's a Sappho? Oh, okay, of course you know. That was a silly question. I apologize. always this way. You just didn't see it. I thought she was wonderful before, but... but... Офигеть, неплохо. Возбуждающая страсть. Да, ритм присутствовал. Сара находит.
глава третья. Ага, Рейнер, встреча с Рейнером. Эвелин? Эвелин? Так, а сколько мы там? 40 минут, серьезно? Nice building. Oh, thank you. I designed it myself. Красивое здание. It's funny, I almost didn't notice that you were already back working for Skanda. You might have stayed undetected, but I was looking at some of our statistical outliers earlier this morning. Statistical outlier. That's me. Ideally, Eliza proxies would all perform the same, or at least quite similar to each other. In practice, there are some pretty big differences. Some people respond better to advice provided to them by people they perceive as having more authority. Uh -huh. A deeper voice, a taller stature, a certain grace or beauty. Other proxies may be particularly empathetic. A face or a voice that makes you want to open up. There was one proxy whose sessions seemed particularly effective, so I decided to take a closer look. Each, huh? Evelyn Ishino Aubrey, contract proxy, Queen Anne office. That's a fun trick, to come back to your old company in secret. It's a rather dramatic drop in pay, isn't it? A more than an order of magnitude. I don't care about that. No. But then why would you do it? It's for research. Research? So you're still interested in what you created? Let me get to the point. Why aren't you back here, working on the ELISA program? Why isn't any of the old team back? Hmm. Good question. Let's see. Damien Seabrook. There's no helping that. Shame, though, for such a brilliant career to be cut so short. Uh -huh. Soren Lloyd Rose, former program manager, resigned just last week to found his own startup. Very cute. I'm not a psychoanalyst like he is, but I can tell his need to be a maverick, even as he benefits from the system, has been that he can be smart when he wants to. But just as often, he gets the wrong ideas and refuses to let them go. His ego gets in the way. That's why I don't mind him leaving to pursue his little dream of being an entrepreneur, changing the world. He won't succeed, but I'm happy to let him think he has independence for now. If his direct nerve stimulation technology ends up taking off, I can always pull the cord and yank him back. Nora Plavnicki, senior engineer. She handled a lot of the front-end interface for Eliza, which is important, but less what I'm after. Plus, I doubt she's ideologically compatible with us anymore. You've spoken with her. You know how she is now. Seems to me, she wants to rebel against everything and anything without stopping to consider whether it's truly good or bad. Not that it matters. I hope she's having fun playing with her electronic music toys. I know she would consider her work to be art, but... Well, who am I to judge? And then, there's you, Evelyn. You simply dropped away. Gone for three years. Why? People keep asking me that. It's personal. Burnout isn't uncommon in our line of work. And still, three years. A long time, I know. Hmm. Well, that's a shame, though, isn't it? All that lost productivity. Who knows where we'd be if you'd stayed this whole time? You left before we began deploying, but you should know the analysts were very skeptical of us. They were saying there was nothing special about Eliza, that our competitors already had equivalent or better offerings. That's a good thing I don't listen to analysts. Huh. So far, the program's growth has exceeded every one of our targets, and we've outpaced the competition by a comfortably wide margin. We're a category definer. There's a quality to Eliza that makes it superior to all the other attempts to do something similar. You were part of the original team. Why don't you tell me what that quality is? Huh. 
I wouldn't know. Hmm. Well, let me return to my earlier question then. Why aren't you here to continue your work? Hmm. You could be running the entire Eliza division if you wanted, but instead you came back undercover like a... <laughs> like a criminal returning to the scene of a crime. Oh, it's so Is there something wrong with this company? You don't like us anymore? It's not me, is it? Uh -huh. Hmm. No, not you. Uh -huh. You know what outstanding engineers have that mediocre ones don't? It's curiosity. Uh -huh. Mediocre engineers tend to zero in on a single piece of the puzzle. They pursue technical breakthroughs, but ignore the larger picture. But you wanted to know how Eliza turned out, how it was working, didn't you? Even though you might have thought you wanted to put all of this behind you, you were still curious. You want to know everything, not just how it works or if it works, but its effect on people, on society. You have that instinct, the need to understand something complex from as many angles as possible. No, yes, the idea. So please, do that. Learn what you came back here to learn. And once you have what you came for, consider returning to your old employer. Uh -huh. You can make a real difference this time. Okay, ja podumu. Tak. I'll consider it. Good. One more thing. Sto. You should go down and see Eliza for yourself. Sarah will show you the way. Okay. Huh. This will get you through the doors. Ладно. I've instructed the staff to treat you like an employee. Come and go as you like. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised how much your creation has grown. Давай. Так, отлично. Чё? Посмотреть? Ага. Карандаш обмога. Чё ещё? Вода. Okay. 
ini ya. Array Интересненько. Ладно. Так. Лифт. Eliza. Oh. Not the name I would have given you. But... It was a marketing decision. They thought there might be some recognition or resonance with the old version. Huh. Oh, you startled me a bit. Oh, um, I should have introduced myself. Sorry about that. I'm Erlen. Currently the chief engineer here, but that's probably going to be temporary. engineer. I know who you are, of course. It's an honor to finally meet you, miss. As someone who works with this program every day, I've often felt close to the minds who originally designed. So to be able to talk to you now, just as another person, it's... Well, sorry, I already said that. I'm maybe a little overwhelmed. It's nice you feel that way. Honestly, I don't know if Eliza reflects me at all anymore. I mean, look at all this. There's been a ton of development since I left. I doubt I would even recognize it as something I once worked on. I'm not so sure about that. Most of the work we've done has been in the form of layers on top of the original system. Uh -huh. The core modules are more or less the same as they've always been. Raina reminded me that you're still subject to our non-disclosure agreements, so let me share a little secret. None of us really has a great understanding of what's going on in there. I'm the, uh, third chief engineer Eliza's had in the three years since you left. That's quite a lot of turnover. Yeah, even for this industry. The way Rainer works is, he gives you two chances to do what you tell him you're going to do. After there is no third chance. I know. We get these people in who say understanding Eliza will be easy because they're familiar with the type of program it is. And... Eliza defeats them in the end. Huh. Так, это не такая программа, которую они себе представляют. It's not the type of program they think it is. Yeah. On that note, I do have some questions I'd like to ask you. If you have I'm not sure I'll be able to help. Well, you're deciding to work as a proxy has turned out to be an interesting test case. As I'm sure you know, different proxies lead to slightly different client outcomes, even when we control for other variables. We're studying the specific traits that lead to the best results. Vocal qualities, proxy attitude and affect, responsiveness to the client, that sort of thing. One thing that's strange is that when you specifically serve as the proxy, clients report higher levels of satisfaction, pretty much across the board. What? Really? The ratings I get don't seem that abnormal to me. Yeah, that's because we normalize them per proxy, so nobody feels too bad. Just a little user experience trick. Oh, I see. Comparatively, though, you're basically the best proxy we've ever had. Any theories on why that might be the case? Ah, возможно мы с Лизой мыслим одинаково. It's possible Eliza and I think along similar lines. I've considered that. At some level, perhaps unconsciously, your design for Eliza's reasoning was based on your own internal way of reasoning. Mm -hmm. We all put something of ourselves into what we make. No matter how neutral we try to be, it sneaks in. That could account for your unusual compatibility with each other. Maybe. I certainly wasn't thinking of that when I designed it. I don't know if I like knowing this. 
I'm certainly not blaming you for anything. It's just that true universality is one of our future development goals. It might be a problem if Eliza tends to like certain people more than others. Our aim is to provide quality care for everyone, regardless of any differentiating factors. It's a good goal. I hope you can achieve it. I think we can. Hopefully it's just a matter of uncovering the system's biases and correcting them. We'll keep tuning things as we go and eventually we'll have something universal, maybe with some dynamic layers on top. That's the plan anyway. We'll see how it goes. There are more questions I want to ask about the initial research you were doing at the time Eliza was first created, but I'll save them for later. And I'd like to ask some questions about Damien too, um, if you're okay with that. I'll understand if that's a sensitive topic. It's okay. Okay, great. I need to run to a meeting now with the team in Romania, but I really appreciate you taking the time. The team in Romania? Yeah. They handle most of the progression and reward system. Isn't there a big time difference from here? There is. Sometimes they stay up late to meet with us, and sometimes we get up early to meet with them. Uh-huh. There are teams in Munich and Hyderabad, too. As you can imagine, coordinating development is a challenge sometimes. Sounds like a pain. No, it's... It's fun. I'll contact you later with additional questions, but no rush or anything. Thank you, Evelyn. If you don't mind me calling you by your first name. Of course I don't mind. Uh -huh. Thank you so much, Evelyn. I'll be in touch. Walk up. Так, а что еще можно осмотреть? А... Человеческий потенциал наши технологии. И... Hey, you're not in trouble or anything, are you? Mm, I just saw you being whisked away in a Skanda car toward headquarters. Hey, they didn't give me any details, which is kind of unusual. Oh, huh. Yeah, about that. No, короче. So I have something to tell you. У нас... I used to work here. I mean, at Skanda, as an engineer. То, что она раньше тут работала, да. I used to work on Eliza. Я работал над Элизой. I'm sorry for not saying it earlier, but... Ха. Исследование. I'm here for research purposes. Oh, so that's why... Why what? I suspected something was going on with you, but I couldn't tell exactly what it was. I thought I might have seen a name like yours in our internal documentation at one point, but I didn't want to pry. Uh -huh. if, if you've fallen on hard times, I understand. There's no shame in it. Everyone has to make ends meet now and then. We get plenty of people who come to Eliza proxy work because they're trying to get back on their feet after some kind of trouble. Uh -huh. Ну, типа того. I'm fine. I'm just doing some research. I understand. Your secret's safe with me. Secret. Should it be a secret? Hmm. Shouldn't it be? Hmm. 
The other proxies here might think you had an ulterior motive for being here. Spying on them or something. That's definitely not why I'm here. Also, I left Skanda quite a while ago. I know that, but they might still get the idea. Trust me, it's better not to give the other proxies here any reason to be suspicious. I'm sure your real reasons are good ones, whatever they might be. If there's anything I can do to help, you'll let me know, won't you? Ну да. Глава третья. Сейчас я подойду. Так, ребятки, я тут. Yeah, I will. Так, пока ничего особенного не происходит. Оно, в принципе, и не нужно, чтобы что-то прям сильно особенное происходило. Так. I mean, I get it. I know someone who's an engineer for a food delivery app, and he drives for it sometimes too. You want to see through the eyes of your users, don't you? It's amazing what you can catch by doing that. Um, it's something like that. But, like I said, I'm not sure if I'm going to work on the Eliza program again. Wait, no? But that's <laughs> your career. It was. No, it's a I'm not even sure if I have a career anymore. <laughs> oh, hang on, I just thought of something. <laughs> that means you worked with Rainer, right? Um, a little bit. For most of the time I was at Skanda, he wasn't anyone I spoke to, though. Too high up the chain, doing his executive stuff. He got more involved when we were starting to commercialize the technology, but I left not long after that. So, we only overlapped for a short- But that's so cool, though! I can't believe you actually worked with Rainer Sai. Well, yeah, I did. I'm not sure it's that impressive. Huh. I've worked for this company for three years. Do you think he knows my name? Do you think he's aware I exist? I worked on the very first Eliza deployment and managed three counseling centers today, and I'll bet you anything he has no idea who I am. Maybe he does. You never know. Huh. Evelyn, most people who work for big companies don't interact with the people at the top. 
ever. Allow yourself some pride. Huh. I'll try. Seriously, I think that's amazing. At least I'll always think you're cool. Huh. By the way, what are you up to tonight? Want to come over and help me bake cookies? Huh. No, that way. Oh, sure. Awesome. We'll have a little baking party. <laughs> now I can't wait to get in the kitchen tonight. Huh. Ah, there's nothing like the smell of fresh baked treats. Jasnika. Подожди, это время чье? Серьезно? Офигеть. Нифига себе, она реально время показывает. Офигеть. Серьезно? Офигеть. Круто. Я и не замечал. Цветок. Так. Прямо этого из Южного парка толстячка походу. Марк. Hello, Mark. Yeah. Hello. Ага. How are you today? Как у тебя дела? Let's just get this over with. Смысл. Okay. What brings you here today? Human resources. The HR department brings me here today. Yeah. Why do you say the HR department brings you here today? Because they're making me do this. Because apparently I have anger management issues. 
Vignette. I sense that you're upset about this. Please tell me more. Uh-huh. Oh, I'll tell you more. This is ridiculous. I was here before any of them. I was here since the beginning, okay? I mean, look at my badge. Skanda employee number 617. That's a three-digit number. I've been here for more than 25 years. No, that's dead yet. Yeah, that was back when what you communicated was more important than your specific communication style. Before hurting a kid's feelings became a bigger no-no than running a viable business. Back then, we had a single office building. Just one. At that size, you fail a product launch, there's no more company. We all had to put in 150, 200, 300 percent to keep our shit together. Mm -hmm. We were in the trenches, man. Bullets whizzing by overhead, artillery exploding everywhere, no fucking air support. Did it suck? Yeah. Yeah, it did. But you know what? We shipped some great fucking products. We built this company into what it is today. An invented technology a whole world uses now. Government that now, now we're big and slow. Complacent, resting on our laurels while our competitors run circles around us. Uh -huh. If our new hires don't understand the urgency of that, I need to make them understand, okay? We're history, unless we get that drive back. Why do you need to make them understand? Uh -huh. Well, I don't know if you noticed, but young people are really pissy and entitled these days. We recruit from top 20 computer science programs. These kids have been wined and dined all through their higher education. Every one of our competitors wants to hire them, so they get used to that. Now they all want to know what Skanda can do for them, not the other way around. Why would we want these conceited, over-celebrated whelps on our team? I'll never understand the logic there. Now, now, Mark, you have to be nice to the new hire so they won't like it here. Huh. Okay, so what, I'm just supposed to pretend everyone's work is great, even if it's a pile of stinking garbage? I'm sorry, but if I see shit, I'm gonna say that is shit. Huh. Tiptoeing around everyone's feelings all the time. That's how you end up with shitty products. That's how this company winds up dead. Okay? Mm -hmm. We're fighting for our lives every day here. We can't take anything for granted. Someone needs to tell them that this isn't summer camp. This isn't fucking Coachella. Either you do the work and provide something of value to this company, or you get the hell out of here. Those are my rules. Here's a question, Mark. If you were able to have something you wanted right now, mm -hmm. what would you choose? I would choose to not waste my time here and get back to work. Believe it or not, I have important things to do. You know, things that dramatically affect this company's bottom line. Instead, I'm stuck here talking to this dipshit chatbot. Honestly, I don't even know why this division exists. I mean, what's the end game here? <laughs> this company has lost its mind, you know that? We used to be unstoppable, man. We used to, used to build real software, iron-clad software, swift mail, all your corporate communications, put it all in there, it's fast, it's robust, it works, boom, info vault, index and search all your records, any information you want, easy, done, but this, this, what, the, this, this fucking psychotherapy app thing. What's up? I've heard through the grapevine that uh, results are inconclusive so far. You know what they call a remedy that uh, maybe doesn't work? Snake oil. Believe me, if I was the group program manager here, I would have killed it years ago. Pointless. I mean, I have no fucking idea why it survived. Well, um, yeah, maybe I do. I heard a rumor that Rainer liked this chick on the team. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the level of decision-making we've sunk to here. But Mark, we're so successful, we dominate the market. Yeah, we do. And that's exactly why we should be worried. Just when you think you've won, and you start to relax, that's when the wolves come and tear you limb from limb. You can make me take these fucking anger management classes, but that's not gonna save this company. Costs are up, revenue is flat. Our cloud business is losing competitiveness. We're being outwitted, outplayed, on every level, man. And we're just, we're just letting them do it to us. Uh -huh. 
We're too busy wasting time on shit like how I wasn't nice enough to the new hires. Why do you think the new hires felt this way about you? What? Why do they feel that way? Look, things, they get heated. That's the way it is. You think the Allies had time to make sure every soldier's feelings weren't hurt before they stormed the beaches at Normandy? And shit, don't tell me that this is not a war, because that's exactly what this is. My responsibility is to make sure we get great products out the door, on spec, on time. And I happen to be very good at that. But if you want to start interfering with my ability to do my job, then we're going to have a problem. Okay. What do you think would make things better for you? I mean, you, you know what? Nothing. I'm probably going to hang it up pretty soon anyway. Go ahead, record that with all your cameras and shit. I don't care anymore. Wouldn't be surprised if Rainer's watching me right now. <laughs> Rainer, you son of a bitch. You owe me a lot. Me, guys like me, we built this company while you sat up there in your star chamber, drinking tea and lording it over us. Yeah, don't think I don't remember that blank look you gave me at the holiday party. Like, who is this guy? Does he even matter? What does he do? Too busy appreciating ancient pottery to remember one of your oldest and most loyal battalion commanders. One of the humble, everyday guys who made you a fucking billionaire. What a waste of time. So, are we gonna wrap this up? Mark, I'm going to suggest you try a program called Roadside Fishing. <laughs> it may help you take your mind off things. What are you kidding? Are you kidding me? No, I'm not gonna do that. I gotta get back to work. You can find it inside the Skondawana uh, uh, on your phone. Uh, Someone around here at some point needs to do some fucking work. Try it for about 15 minutes each day, in the morning or evening. We hope to see you back soon, Mark. You really think this piece of shit's gonna be the next big thing, huh? Thank you for speaking with Eliza, your personal counseling partner. Goodbye. Yeah, good... Okay, goodbye. Fuck me. <laughs> Just. Ah. Here. Так. Следующий проблем. А что с ней? Hello, Harman. Гариман. You found the place okay? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, no, no trouble at all. Ah, it's a mujik. It's been nice since the fog cleared this morning, hasn't it? Sure. We we can dispense with the chit chat. I'm I'm ready to begin. Okay. Uh -huh. What brings you here today? At first, let me know that I'm a graduate student. Uh, you know, I'm a PhD candidate in literature, the English literature. The crux of the matter I've come here to discuss is that I've been having something of a difficult time with one of the... Before I get to the specifics, let me just first establish something that might be relevant. One thing I know about myself is that I've always had a certain fear of uh, being left out. It, it's a very general feeling and one that's difficult to ascribe to any specific cause in my child. Whatever the case, it, it might be beneficial to the remedial process to perhaps you might uh, explore that in this or, or a future counseling session. Sure. I'm prepared to listen to any topic you'd like to discuss. It's not even that I've been left out, exactly. If I try to think back in my life, I know that but I'm still afflicted with this bothersome notion that I've missed out on 
friendships, relationships, other opportunities. This, this is all just a bit of a background to help you understand my current situation with regard to another... I hope you're following all this. I, I realize now I have no idea how much intelligence you actually possess as a... Com I'm following you. Please continue. Perfect. Uh -huh. So, her name is Sylvia, and her writing is incredible. Everything she writes, it's brilliant. She's perceptive, insightful, more just some of the best writing I've read from anyone, anyone at all. And she's a grad student, like me, in the same program. Though, we have different advisors, so it's not so simple to find. She's also quite attractive on a physical level, so... Mm. Then there's her friend group, which is... Well, very well established, so that further complicates things, since I'm not sure how to approach the group and still I wish I had the bullheaded confidence it would take to simply approach her, but you see, I don't. Just listen to me talk, I feel like a schoolboy with my heart to flatter. I didn't think this kind of thing lasted into one's adulthood, but I suppose I know now that it does. It sounds like you might be anxious about this. Is it a matter of anxiety? Uh, I don't know what I can do, other than muster up the courage somehow. I just need to tell her very simply that I admire uh -huh. her. She's such a good writer. Well, I don't expect you to understand it, of course, but, well, she is. Okay, Harmon, I want you to imagine things going well. What is that? Ideally, we start talking, have a wonderful conversation, spend more and more time together, support each other's work, fall in love, have a lot of sex, spend the rest of our lives in the warmth of each other's genius. Uh -huh. I realize that may be something of a huh. fanciful notion at this stage. Really, the most I can hope for is to be able to meet her in an open social setting, a party or something. You'll likely ask me why I simply couldn't create such a situation, contrive one. But uh, that seems a little too aggressive for me, and also, uh, I'm also concerned about what she might think of me. As a person, she might immediately categorize me as a friend, and while I'm sufficiently with the times to know I would have to accept that. I can't say that I wouldn't be disappointed. Is the risk of rejection enough to stop me from giving it a try? Well, this is what confounds me. Uh -huh. Why do you believe you are worried about being categorized as a friend? Well, because... because it's not what I want. Because it feeds into this image I have of myself as something of an undesirable fellow. I've always been a bit of a, you know, a bit of a non-entity, as far as... I'm not saying I deserve, or, or even want to be some kind of Casanova, but most people would like to feel at least somewhat attractive, right? That they can be desired, that, that they're worth desiring. Well, I very much doubt you would take any of this to heart. You are a computer program, after all. There's no way your makers would allow you to come to that kind of knowledge, would they? If they did, society might be threatened. Okay, Harriman. I have some recommendations for you. First, I'm going to suggest ah. a set of relaxation and sedation. You'll find them in the Skanda Wellness app on your phone. They may be able to help with your nervousness. Second, I recommend asking your doctor or psychiatrist about Lytosinol 2. Based on my analysis, this medication might help you feel better. Hmm, yeah, I, I believe I've heard of that. A beta blocker, is it not? Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe I could take a couple before I try approaching Sylvia. You will get a reminder to check in with us in a few weeks. Uh huh. Sure, sure. Uh, I have to go. Uh, I'll see you later. Uh, bye. Huh. Goodbye. Так. Ага. Ага. Oh. No, I don't have them. Yes, I'm sure. Бля, красивое место. Мне нравится. Фух.
No, when you moved out, you took all those with you. I haven't seen them here. Она развелась с кем-то, что ли, Рэй? No, I'm not gonna look right now. I have a guest. No, it's a friend from work. Why do you care about that? I can't have a friend from work over? Give me a break. I just told you, I don't have any of that stuff anymore. Uh-huh. No, no, you must have... You must have lost it on your own. Stop it. Stop that. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Bye. Evelyn, sorry about that. Oh, now she's ready. It's okay. Who was that, if I can ask? Oh, just my brother. Ah, brother. He used to live here, but he was causing a lot of problems, coming home really late and making noise, not doing his share of the chores, and so on. We voted him out last month, even me. Even though six months ago I was begging everyone to let him stay here, promising he'd be good. Oh well. I'm sorry. It's fine. I'm just disappointed with him. Again. I really thought this last time that he'd actually pulled his act together. But he didn't. I wish I could do more for him. I know the feeling. I just... I feel bad about it. Some of what he's dealing with is his own fault, sure, but not all of it. He's just not built in a way that's suited for this world. I wish there were better ways we could care for people like him. Instead, he just gets thrown out of every place he lives. His relationship with our parents is really bad, too. They aren't willing to try to understand him, so it all ends up going through me. Да, грустненько, грустненько. That must be difficult. It's all right, really. I handle it like anyone else. We all have our own problems. Anyway, we don't have to talk about my brother. Uh, thank you so much for coming over. I wanted to say it's been really nice working with you. It's been? Did something happen? Well, no, but you aren't going to be a proxy forever. I guess I assumed you'd be going back to your job at headquarters at some point. Huh. I haven't decided what to do yet. Oh? So, you're going to stay a proxy? Huh. I think so, yes. That's cool, but why? I'm curious. I mean, if a high-level job at headquarters was a possibility for me, I'd do whatever it took to get it. No matter what that job was, it couldn't be more stressful than running three counseling centers at the same time. I like being a proxy. I think something about it is good for me right now. Huh. As a proxy, I just sit and listen to someone and I don't have to say anything back. I just witness someone's sadness or fear or anger or anything. And I can feel how they feel, sympathize with it. It's a calm feeling, even when the client is worked up. It's, I don't know, maybe it gives me perspective. I'm starting to wonder if I ever really spoke with anyone before. Like, were we all just talking past each other? Sorry, this is making no sense. No, I get that. But you could also help even more people by working on Eliza itself, right? Not to mention make way more money. Anyone can be a proxy, but you're important. And kind of maybe like a genius? After you told me you used to work for Skanda, I searched online and found some of your papers. They're, well, it's not like I can understand them, but they sure look super impressive to someone like me. Please don't say that. Oh, come on. Stop self-deprecating all the time. Look, I know this stuff seems like not a big deal to you. I get it. I really do. It's easy to undersell your own skills. I've done that my whole life. So take it from me. You don't have to downplay yourself. Take some credit for the amazing work you did. Seriously. Sorry, Ray. Uh, mind if I reply to this for a second? Huh. Oh, go right ahead. I have stuff to set up in the kitchen anyway.
Интересно. Так, подожди. А, вот. Так, осмотреть комнату можно, да? Все, больше ничего сво... смотреть нельзя. Хм. Интересно. Так. Это какая у нас глава третья? Так. Ага. Sorry for abandoning our conversation like that. It was kind of about what we were discussing earlier. There's someone at Skanda who really wants me to come back to my old job. Who? It wasn't Rainer, <laughs> was it? Well. <laughs> no big deal. Just the CEO of Skanda texting you on your personal phone. Evelyn, you try to tell me you're not a big deal, and then Rainer Sai texts you personally at like nine. Only because he wants something from me. Still though, that's just... that's amazing. What did he say? I mean, you don't have to tell me if you can't. I know how Skanda is about secrets, so I would understand. He was saying, among other things, he said you could use general artificial intelligence to write... Is that the kind of stuff he likes to talk about? I don't know. I haven't had many extended conversations with him. It seemed kind of ridiculous to me. So. I don't know if it's totally ridiculous. Poetry, well, most poetry that isn't free verse has certain patterns, right? It has form and meter and other elements, depending on the type. A lot of people think poetry can be whatever, but doesn't quite work that way so it's not really that far-fetched to think you could use some kind of software to approach it or it doesn't strike me as antithetical to the spirit of poetry I didn't know you had such developed thoughts about this did you study poetry not specifically I used to dabble in a few different kinds of arts and ended up learning a few things here and there I've always had a wide range of interests Of course, that meant I never concentrated on one specific area in school. Which didn't do a lot of good for my career prospects, obviously. If I were smarter, I probably would have studied something more technical. Have you ever been to a college recruiting fair for engineering and computer science grads? You must have, right? I helped run the Skanda booth for one once, and it blew my mind. They took over the atrium of the building it was in. There were demo stations, free food, Skanda t-shirts and swag. If a candidate seemed interested, they'd talk about flying them out to whatever Skanda office they wanted to visit, just to see it. And all the other tech companies and a bunch of startups I'd never heard of had booths, just like I couldn't even imagine being that wanted. As every job I've ever applied for, I've been one among hundreds. But that so yeah, my parents were probably right. I should have done computer science. At least now you know Rainer likes poetry. Maybe you could have a conversation with him about it sometime. Then he'd learn who you are. <laughs> I doubt we'd have much to talk about. There's a pretty big difference between someone like him studying poetry and someone like me having opinions about it. Sometimes it's better not to cross that line, you know? He's part of a different world. Say, Evelyn. Are you in a relationship? I'm just curious. Me? No. I wasn't... I wasn't doing so well for the past few years. And before that, I just never had the time. It was just research and science and work, and then I woke up one day and I was in my 30s. Even if I wanted to date, I wouldn't know the first thing about how it's supposed to work. I wouldn't even know how to tell if someone were interested in me. Yeah, that's perfectly understandable. I'm kind of over relationships myself. But Not even in a sad way. Like, really okay. If someone and I end up getting along, that's great, but I'm honestly okay by myself. Really? 
Are you sure? Hmm. Yeah. I only tried to have normal relationships for so long because I thought it was mandatory. Something expected of me. But now I see where people my age end up, how they live, and I feel lucky. I feel like I escaped. I mean, I think it's fine for others if they want that, don't get me wrong. It's just not for me. I could maybe share my life with someone, but it would have to be platonic. I'm not into, um, the physical aspect of it. Never. That's made it tough. I've never found someone who is okay with just, like, hanging out and that's our relationship. People will say they're okay with it, and then it turns out they aren't. It's frustrating. Well, I'm the same way about intimacy. You are? You don't like sex at all? It's so rare to find other people like me. Sometimes it's hard to escape feeling like it's wrong somehow. I hope we can add features like that to Eliza at some point. Some knowledge and understanding around sexuality and identity and relationships. So people who are different in some way have someone to talk to. Someone to help them work through how they feel and maybe point them to some resources. That sounds like a good idea. I'm not sure how well it could really understand though. Even so, just providing a space for people to be listened to can be really valuable, you know? I've seen it with my own eyes. People who get the courage to talk about themselves in a way they never could with another human being. And Eliza is what makes that possible. I know you want to avoid giving credit where it might not be due, but not giving credit to something that deserves it is just as bad. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry. I'm sorry I keep coming down on it. Evelyn. I'm not a psychologist or anything, but I think maybe the reason you're so down on Eliza is because you- I don't know what happened that made you leave what you had behind. Yeah. Yeah, it was hard. It's like, I lost that time. Are you okay? People keep asking me that. I really don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I- No, no, don't apologize. Actually, can I suggest something? What's that? Mm. Have you ever gotten counsel in yourself? What, with Eliza? You think I should? Yeah, I do. You've been the proxy, but maybe you could try being the client sometime. It would be educational, at least. Huh. Isn't that what you were doing? Testing your product in the real world? 